Here's one more example for half-life stuff. This one involves what we call a radioactive decay curve. Anytime you see a radioactive decay curve, it'll be shaped like this. As time goes up, and time will always appear on the x-axis, then n on the y-axis will go down. Now, you can see that on this particular graph, n is measured in counts per minute, but it could be measured in percent, or it could be measured in grams, or it could be measured in just a number. Okay? On the x-axis will be time, on the y-axis will be n, whatever those units are. And the shape will always be the same again, because as time goes up, n will always go down. Now, the good news is for this graph, we don't need to worry about straightening it. We don't need to worry about the y equals mx plus b thing because it's not a straight line graph. We don't need to worry really about any significant calculations. The only thing we're going to have to do with this graph, one of two things, either over, up and over, and or over and down. Up and over, over and down. In this question, we want to find the decay rate, or in other words, we want to find n, that the radioactive sample would experience after three half-lives. So the first thing i got to do is find out what the half-life is, right? How do I find out what the half-life is here on this graph? How much do I start with? What's the initial amount? What's n0? 80. Okay, so what do I have left after a half-life? 40. 40, all right. So let's go 40 over and down, and we see that the half-life is two days. Does that make sense? We're not done yet, but... Clearly, we're on our way. The half-life going over and down is two days. Now, what would three half-lives be? Three half-lives would be six days. So my time would be six days. What am I going to do now? Up and over. So let's go over to six days. Go up and over. And when I do that, it looks like the amount of n, or the value of n after six days, is about 10. A little bit hard to tell on this graph because we don't have enough vertical and horizontal lines. Okay, maybe it's 9.7 or something like that. You can be sure that on a test, you'll have enough grid lines that you can give a, a pretty precise value of that. Make sense? That's all we got to do for this, really. It's up and over, maybe over and down, maybe both of them in the same question. Okay, but in the end, that's it. Okay, I'm telling you right now, on your unit test, and that's question number one. Like, that's the first question. When you, oh, when you look at that unit test, that's going to be on the front page, a graph that looks like this. It may not be counts per minute on this axis here, but it's going to be a value of n. Maybe it's grams, maybe it's kilograms, maybe it's number. I honestly don't remember, but it's a graph that looks like this, and I'm telling you, you're going to go up and over, or you're going to go over and down, or you're going to do both of those like we just did.